The cybersecurity story of the year has been, without question, ransomware. Underground cybercriminal gangs have turned to larger organizations with bigger payouts, taking down gas pipelines and government health services. In fact, ransomware has become so mainstream that it's been covered in talk shows, and the public has learned many new names, from our evil and dark side to Babuk and Rauk. Oddly enough though, it seems that these gangs disappear almost as soon as they make their presence known. Why, how does it happen, and are they really gone for good? To find out more about the life cycle of ransomware gangs, we sat down with Leonid Bezvershenko and Dmitry Golov, two security researchers with Kaspersky's Global Research and Analysis team. There are a lot of ransomware gangs out there. Some of the ones we've been seeing in the headlines are Conti, are Evil, Babook. When did these groups first start appearing and how long are they usually active for? Well, most of the names that we read about uh, in media appeared in 2019 or 2020. Nevertheless, there are really big and uh, loud cases that appeared only this year. Um, so some of the older ransomware groups like RansomX uh, used to focus on financial attacks and operate in banking trojans and only afterwards shifted to ransomware. So the average lifespan of ransomware again used to be around 1.5 to 2 years. So now it appears that uh, it is even less. So by this point they start uh, just drawing so much attention to themselves and uh, sometimes the easiest way out for the cyber criminals is just to lay low or to rebrand or to create a new gang altogether. So which ransomware groups had their activity seized recently? Well, this year we saw really many different cases and different shutdowns of uh, big players, big groups. For example, one of them, uh, Abaddon, which was highly prolific uh, in 2019, operating on the ransomware as a service model and attacking like everything, including healthcare in the US, telecom industry and things like that. Uh, this June, they just shut down and released decryptors for nearly 3,000 victims. Another good example is uh, Babuk, uh, which uh, used to be a really well-known ransomware operator uh, that we are not seeing anymore. Uh, so after they attacked Washington police and leaked uh, their employees' personal data, they just stopped attacking. Um, well, however, um, they were still active after that case and they were using their portal for uh, other groups. So other groups utilized this portal for their leaked materials. Um, after that, we've seen uh, the case of uh, their source code being leaked uh, and uh, openly distributed on uh, different forums. Um, other one that can be interesting is Darkseid, uh, which is most known for the Colonial Pipeline attack uh, this year. They were forced um, to shut down after losing access to their service as well. So, like, we can imagine so many different cases where uh, those actors disbanded or just rebranded or lost access to something or changed their uh, TTPs, so it's really good. Why do certain groups decide to disband? Well, so usually it is uh, the threat of being caught uh, or that the gang's operations are being hindered by some authorities. Uh, public attention really does help with this, uh, with this threat. So if we look uh, at Avadon that we already mentioned, uh, it uh, wasn't just profitable anymore. They were facing pressure and a major crackdown from uh, various law enforcement agencies. So um, uh, also with the takedown of Amatet gang, which operated a large botnet network, uh, new ransomware groups uh, lost the malware that was actually really actively used to gain uh, an initial foothold in users' system. So from our perspective, uh, the bad news is uh, that Amotet uh, has um, started operation again. So we'll see uh, what the potential outcomes will be out of there. Well, Darkseid was also facing pressure from law enforcement agencies and lost control of their servers, including their blog and payment system. They also lost some funds. However, we are seeing that such groups like Darkseid are capable of regrouping. 
In July, a new group, Black Matter, appeared, and uh, we believe that this is just rebranding of Dark Side. This is th something that happens quite often. Old groups going under the radar when the pressure from authorities becomes too hard and just rebranding themselves. So, R Evil and Babook also appeared as a result of uh, other operations disbanding. For example, Reveal grew from Gun Crab and Babook from Wasa Locker. Can you walk us through a typical timeline of some of these ransomware groups? So, there isn't a specific recipe to success for ransomware gangs, but there are certainly are uh, some typical traits. They start off with setting up ransomware as a service. It is seldom the group itself that distributes ransomware. Instead, there is a whole ecosystem in place. Then, finding ransomware distributors who penetrate and infect networks. At some point, hitting a large company and making a big hype in the media. This attracts even more people who want to work with the operator end up hitting an even larger target, like Babook and Air Evil did. At this point, there is uh, often a misstep. They attract too much attention, like Darkseid did and usually go dark. Or the authorities help them go offline. This is a whole cycle takes about less than one year. Sometimes gangs take a different strategy. For instance, Babook didn't stop operating entirely. They rebranded to Pilot.bin and started offering their platform to other ransomware groups who didn't have their own data leak site for uploading their leaks. And on, so on the 3rd of September, one of the developers behind Babook Ransomware published the ransomware source code for the Windows, NAS servers and ESXi environments that led to even worse consequences. Now, this code can be used by plenty of cybercriminals with just a few minor modifications. And on the 3rd of September, one of the developers behind Babook Ransomware published the ransomware source code for the Windows, NAS servers and ESXCI environments that led to even worse consequences. Now, this code can be used by plenty of cybercriminals with just a few minor modifications. While young and short-lived, Ransomware gangs surprise us with the intensity of their activities. Kanti is behind 400 attacks in just two years, a rival behind 200. Ransomware gangs also have sufficient funds to develop their malware. JSWorm is a good example. They invested significant funds into upgrading their ransomware. We have seen eight major changes to their ransomware in two years, and they are still operating. Speaking about our evil, they seem to be a particularly interesting case. In 2021, they were involved in some really big attacks. Acer, uh, JBS, the meat producer, and then all of a sudden their servers were shut down and people thought, okay, they're out of the game. Yet they resurfaced once again and started attacking organizations only to be shut down again in October thanks to international cooperation. Seems like a really lively gang and a lot of effort put into combating them. What do you think we'll see from our evil next? Well, Reveal is one of the most prolific ransomware as a service threat actors. Uh, the group's first activity was observed in April 2019. Um, they are a prime example of a successful and very persistent ransomware group. On their happy blog, where they published leaked information of their victims, uh, which refused to pay, their list of the victims is really long. In the course of their operations, they carried uh, over 200 attacks. So in May, they brought attention to themselves after hacking a number of uh, world-renowned uh, companies. As a result, ransomware was brought to the attention of high-level government authorities. For example, the US President Biden spoke about uh, our evil having to be brought down. It was the first time in history when ransomware operations gained such attention from uh, politicians. Uh, on July 13 this year, uh, the entire web infrastructure of the ransomware group was taken off the network. 
The sight of the gang in the tour was disabled. It looked like uh, our evil ceased their operations. But a couple of months later, they came back online claiming that the reasons behind their pause in operations were internal. And this autumn, they have been taken down as a result of international cooperation. Will our evil come back or not? It is really hard to predict. They well might restart their operations all over again under the same name or may choose to create a new ransomware gang. One thing is clear though, the attention that they brought ransomware forced a series of changes uh, in how this market operates as a whole. Due to such uh, stringent uh, attention from the authorities, public activity of ransomware operators has decreased. They have been kicked out from darknet forums and now mainly communicate in private. What other ransomware trends do you think we can expect in 2022? We are going to continually see new groups appear, and the market's biggest players will undoubtedly evolve. Still, big attacks mean attention from the public. Ransomware operators got a taste of what it's like to be famous. And for some of them, this is important. We are all human, after all. That means ransomware will continue to be in the headlines, which can sometimes be helpful. International law enforcement agencies and groups need to be aware of the threat because ransomware can only be tackled through international cooperation. What's more, the more the extent of the problem is brought to light, the more people will know how to protect themselves. Over the past two years, ransomware has become the most discussed cyber threat out there. And it doesn't just pose a risk to the companies that suffer major financial losses. Ransomware is a threat to the targeted organizations, employees, and customers, and it can lead to real offline consequences, not just a halt in production or processes, but actual human casualties. As a result, international cooperation to combat the ransomware threat has kicked off, and we are yet to see how it will develop further. To learn more, Check out the link below the video to read our latest report on ransomware as part of our Kaspersky Security Bulletin. Stay safe.